props. I dropped it. Props. Props. I'm not going to throw this one. Sort of place it there. Back in a second. Yeah, careful with these. Put that there. No, that, that's on the chair. It's in the way. Um, oh! Ah. Oh, it's okay. It's already broken. It's more to illustrate a principle, um, but it's a prop. So. Laptop shouldn't make that. Anyway, YouTubians, are we recording? I think we're recording. I think we're recording. How to test your speakers for uh, distortion. You're probably thinking, multiplier, my speakers don't distort. Uh, yeah, they do. Uh, all speakers distort. That's a fact of the universe. Um, it's okay, most of these are broken. It's not true, only half of them are broken. Anyway, so yes, all speakers, uh, so not whether it's headphones or speakers like these guys, or Laptop speakers, I mean, this, this one you can hear is broken, but even if your laptop speakers aren't broken, need these distort too. Basically, all speakers, all speakers distort. So, they, do you, you know what distortion is? Uh, if you're not 100% sure on distortion, have a Google. Uh, I've, I did a course about it. And or grab a distortion device in your DAW and familiarize yourself with the way distortion or saturation sounds. Uh, distortion is the uh, technical term, the, the more all encompassing term, saturation is a form of distortion. Strictly speaking, even EQ is technically, technically distorted. Anyway, it's not important. So distortion is, you know, loosely speaking, you know well enough what distortion is. Now, what have I told you? I already have told you that all speakers distort. You're then probably thinking, hmm, oh no, that sounds bad. You'd be, you'd be correct in saying, oh, this video is sponsored by the way. Oh yes, let me tell you very quickly about that. And then more in depth about that. This video is sponsored by Zamba. Zamba is a new online music platform for people. Words are difficult. People, it's an online. I'll say that again. Zamba is a new online music platform for people to connect, discover, and promote audio content through social media influencers. Now, now, more importantly for you and me, I'll, I'll run through this in more detail later. But basically, I partnered to give away my music production bundle, normally priced at this price, for one month. I think some limited amount of time for probably one month for only $9 through Zamba. I'm a huge fan of what they're doing and I'll, I'll, as I say, I'll tell you more about this soon. Anyway, so yes, back to uh, link, link below naturally, but uh, more importantly for the content of the video, how do you test speaker distortion? Let's say you've got some of these. I mean, I actually picked up the wrong ones. These, that doesn't go into there. Anyway, how do you test this? Uh, I'll just sort of put that like that. Ugh. How do you how do you test speaker distortion? Well, I'm going to show you two main ways to do it. The easy peasy way, if you happen to have your computer plugged into the thing you want to listen to, let's say you want to test these, for example, uh, you can connect it to the computer, so that's okay. I'll show you that first of all, and then towards the end of the video, a way to test uh, your car speaker system where you can't plug your computer in. Let's put, let's plug this in just for illustrative purposes, purpose I. Um, and then what you do is you put this on your head, um, left and right, uh, like that, I can't hear myself now. Pretend, okay, that's fine. Uh, I can just talk normal. So you put that on your head and that's fine. Okay, um, ooh, okay, hopefully it's fine. We'll find out in the edit. Is the microphone cable still working? I don't know. Multiplier, you're jibber jabbering. Get to the content. So what you can do if you have, say, Ableton, is grab this guy, keep it still, and go to test tone. And then it, so you can sweep through. So the way you test distortion is you want to play single frequencies, so a single sine wave at a range of different uh, at a range of different frequencies, and sweep through those frequencies. And also, very importantly, at different volumes, because the, the naturally the higher the volume, the more things will distort. And so you may not hear much distortion at quieter volumes, but you'll hear probably quite a lot of distortion at higher monitoring volumes. So you need to not only try different frequencies, but also different volumes. And so this takes quite a bit of time, but that's okay. Uh, I'm, I'll just show you very quickly. If you do it really fast or change the volume, then you may be hearing artifacts from the tone generator and not the speakers themselves. So strictly speaking, just move the tone very slowly, different volumes, remember. You get the idea, you sweep frequencies and listen for distortions, listen for problems. Now, it's, I mean, don't need to spend 20 minutes showing you me sweeping frequencies. So what, what is important here is first, okay, first of all, if you're, if you're using say good headphones, uh, such as these, the DT770 Pros, I'll put these, 
in the stack of headphones there. If you're using something like that, uh, or ow, my newer studio headphones, the uh, still two years old, but the upgrades from these. So if you have good headphones, such as the HD 650s, the Sennheisers, the open backed amazing headphones, then you'll hear almost no distortion. In fact, you'll hear so little distortion that it, you it's effectively zero. I mean, there is like on a scientific level always going to be distortion, but it's going to be so small that you're, it's effectively going to be zero. However, if you're using say, Something's broken, I've broken it, everything's broken. Everything's broken, oh, that's fine. These, which are the just the standard Apple in-ear headphones. Uh, I haven't got the adapter. Anyway, not important. So if you're using something cheaper uh, or possibly slightly broken like these, you will hear distortion. So in fact, in these, for example, not that you'll be able to hear it because the, the problem's here. Uh, the left ear sounds different to the right. So the distortions in the left ear are different to the distortions in the right. And that's something I can only understand by doing a test tone and sweeping a sine wave. So as I say, in Ableton, you can just use the test tone down here. Or I suppose if you want to record, you could try operator. However, something to watch out for something like operator is if I just grab a spectrum analyzer, you have to be a bit careful with these, as oftentimes synthesizers bring, or at least have imperfections, or at least they're not perfect sine waves. Have I chosen a bad, I've chosen a bad example. What, what am I thinking of? Oh, I'm thinking of a, a different FM synth. So just to illustrate how you've got to, you've got to be careful, because I had a different one in mind. That was actually okay. However, if I grab FM8, There you go, that, that, that's fine. So notice how, the car outside, that's fine. Are we still recording? We are still recording. Notice how in this case, a simple sine wave or, or what appears to be a sine wave, you can see, yes, it says sine wave here. So what appears to be a sine wave, what you think is a sine wave in FM8, are these additional things which you, might hear as distortion, but in fact, it's not distortion. It's just a screenshot. It's just the imperfection from the, the synth itself. So be careful where you get your tone from. Now you're probably thinking, well, does that mean FMA is useless? Is, is, it, is it bad? No, it's just that it's not optimized for stationary waveforms. FMA is optimized for frequency modulation, not a simple sine wave. Basically some synths will have a sine wave, which is actually a slightly distorted sine wave already analog, which actually sounds nicer. So just be careful, check in the spectrum analyzer, be careful where you get your tones from. And as I say, you will hear different distortions on different speakers, and that's important to know. Because if you have, say, take the distortions on a laptop set of speakers, understanding how they distort at different frequencies and at different volumes helps you understand better what you're hearing and also what the end user will be hearing. As it's not just about you hearing things and understanding what distortions are in it, it's about understanding how the end user is going to be under, or hearing what you're creating. Zamba, let's, uh, Zamba, Zamba, Zamba. Zamba, uh, one more idea coming after this, but but let, let me show you Zamba. Zamba is awesome. Zamba is what I've, I've, I've said, it's a way to connect, discover, and promote audio content through social media influencers. Music production bundle. So my music production bundle, which normally retails for this price, it will be available through Zamba for, I think one month, or some amount of limited time, for $9, which is their upgraded membership thing. So with the Zamba upgraded membership comes free sample packs every month. It's, it's, uh, remember everything, the upgraded membership's only $9, remember? $9, that, uh, only $9, craziness. Anyway, what you get is free sample packs every month, more song submissions to playlists, unlimited song storage, advanced song analytics, oh, words are difficult, advanced song analytics, no service fee on promo channels, where promo channels are advertising and music feedback opportunities made available by social media influencers and YouTubers like me. Similar to SoundCloud, but more about connecting things and just, just getting awesome stuff. I mean, we all hate SoundCloud, let's be real. This is way cooler. And you just, also, they partnered with, with Mousetrap, Dead Mouse's label. How cool is that? Mousetrap, with regards to curated playlists, I think. Something like that. Anyway, do check it out. As I say, link below, Zamba. Partnering with Multiplier. Link below, boom. And back to the content. So the, what you're probably thinking now, it is, hopefully you're thinking this because this is the right thing to think. What you're thinking is, 
great. Now I've tested my headphones. I've discovered that my expensive headphones, my nice ones give effectively no, uh, effectively no distortion, but my cheaper headphones and laptop speakers, etc., do distort, especially at higher volumes. But how do I check the car? My automobile, my mode of transport, and unless you ride a bike or hoverboard. Anyway, so you're probably thinking, how do I check in the car? Now, what you could do is potentially, if you have a really good synthesizer, or at least some, if you have a clean synthesizer in terms of the, the sine wave, you could create just a long pitch sweep using a synth. However, there's actually an easier way if you have isotope RX. Definitely six. I can't remember when they introduced this feature. Clicky, clicky, clicky. Oh no, oh no, that's okay. Anyway, you've probably seen in the editing that the, the thing broke, but that hasn't actually caused any problems. Stupid computer. This is why I hate computers. They always just go wrong for literally no reason. That, that's a bug with ScreenFlow. It just happens every now and then. Duh. Anyway, so, uh, the, uh, let's get start a new screen recording. Back in the game. Okay, so if you have something like Isotope RX, what you can do is use the tone generator, which is, tends to be my preferred way to do it. So well, signal generator, it's called. I said the, I said the wrong word. Signal generator. Well, yeah, it's under tones, so you could call it the tone generator. So what you can do is I can never remember the buttons. Pasting mode duration. Let's do forty-five seconds. Why not YOLO? Um, actually, I will do for the sake of demonstration. Thirty. 20, 20 seconds. I'll make a longer one for something I'll say in a bit. And okay, so sine wave, yep, want the sine wave frequencies, 20, slide two. So I, I think I remember doing this from, ah, because I, I, I did this before. The This is your start frequency, frequency there, and that is your end frequency. Remember the human hearing range is approximately 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. So yeah, why not go the whole way? And in log st scale, that's just like whether it goes bloop, or whether it goes bloop, whether it goes bloop or something like that. Um, but that's just try to know. Level, anti-aliasing with quality, I think that's correct. I think because I, I did some experiments a while ago. Anyway, and then I can't remember actually the buttons to press. Oh, classic multiplier. I want to hit process. Do I need to do I need to hit new first? Uh, file new mono. We'll go for mono. Um, and then pasting mode, insert 20 seconds. And now hopefully if I go click, oh, that looked like it worked. It did. Um, I'll do a test by. Actually, anyway, that's not important. What is important is the idea that you can generate tones, a frequency suite, very easily if you have something like Isotope RX6. Now, for those that don't have RX6, because let's be honest, especially the advanced version, advanced version, at least used to be very expensive. I don't know its current price. Anyway, it's not cheap, and you might not have it. It is amazing, obviously, but. What I will do is include a link. In fact, well, how should I do this? Yes, that's a good idea. So what I'm going to do is include three different test tones in the link below. A short one, a medium length one, and a really long one. So that if you have, say, a car or an automobile or a telephone that you want to test, you can download the files, play them in the car. I'm in a car playing the tone. And then that will allow you to try the different volumes and test the distortion. See what volumes things start to distort. Remember, the distortion might not sound like beautiful saturation. It might, it will in some situations it will, but it might just sound a bit like it might just sound bad. It might sound just like it's broken. The speakers might sound broken, uh, especially in if you have an old car, the speakers might just sound broken or things might start to rattle. That is technically speaking a form of distortion, even if it's not beautiful distortion, such as with analog gear or something like that. So that's worth considering. Basically, distortion is any form of change to the sound, simplistically. So yeah, do check out the link description. It'll probably be at the top of the description will be a link to Zamba, naturally. But then right below that will be a link to these test tones. Fantastic. And things. Is the, is the screen recording? If the screen is recording, brilliant. Um, should I do it? Oh, for those, in fact, let's do this. Yeah, let's do it. For those who happen to have speakers right now, just for fun, because we live in a dangerous world full of dangerous things. Let's do a, a quick test now to give you an example of this frequency sweep, because I haven't played any sound and what am I doing there? No idea. Turn up the volume and enjoy this mega banger. It's the new one by the chain smokers called Sine Wave. Oh, I made a mistake. Ow! Oh, I should have known that. Uh, okay, warning. Oh, I should have put a warning at the beginning. Okay, I might edit this backwards. When testing test tones, 
because of Fletcher Munson curve, Fletcher Munson curves, and a whole bunch of stuff that I, I won't go into now. Uh, you don't turn the volume. Be be careful when you turn the volume loud. You might want to turn it really loud for the bass frequencies, um, but then as it gets to the higher frequencies, your ears will hurt and eventually get damaged. So be be very. very be careful playing the, especially the higher frequencies very loudly. Be careful playing the high frequencies loudly. Now, listening to this, I mean, this is, this is actually why this test tone is so important. So listening to this through, I can hear, so in the ear pad, because I wear these so much, I wear them literally six, seven hours a day, five, six days a week or so. Um, part of the ear, the foam bit is actually broken off inside. And so it kind of resonates around, kind of bounces about. So it sounds like it's broken the right side. It's not actually broken, it's just the ear pad, which I need to send off for another one. Uh, it's under warranty, which is, uh, that happened a while ago, by the way, in case you're curious. Um, I, I did a video a while ago about how to test if headphones were broken. And it, it turned it out that it was yeah just a bit of the foam resonating around in one of the ear cups. Anyway, so I can hear that resonating away as the frequencies sweep through. So that would be a way to confirm that what I'm hearing is this sort of vibrating thing in this side, isolating the problem uh, and understanding what it is. It's a way of testing the speakers. So chances are, as I say, if you have speakers that are imperfect in any way at all, you will hear something in at least one of the headphones as you sweep the frequencies at a range of volumes. So do check it out. Give it a go, give it a go, people. Ah, I've got myself tangled. Give it a go, people. Give it a go. My name, uh, speaker, speaker distortion, Zamba, multiplier, uh, multiplier, multiplying the headphones. What sort of chaos is that? We'll do a thumbnail. Oh. Ooh. Why am I cross-eyed? Oh no, should I do a classic? Oh no. What? Oh, it's, got, it's got to be real emotion. Ah, I'm sure it's fine. Oh, uh, flippity flip. Ah, broken it. Oh, complete disaster. Oops, oops. Uh, oh, you stupid maniac. Doing? It's a disaster. Why are you so tangled? Oh, nothing ever needs to be this tangled. Who invented cables to tangle? This is ridiculous. Oh, I figured it out. Figured it out. Just put it in the hole. 